Hey guys, it is the 16th, which means it's 16 out of 90 days that I'm going live. Actually, I had one I missed in there, but we're gonna we're gonna make it up at the end. So I'm um, you know I'm posting this page. If you go, those of you guys that don't know me, uh, the Transform My Future site is uh, is my website and my my business. But uh, Rethink Dieting is what I do. My name is Alan Thomas, and a uh, little bit of my story, a lot of you guys already know it, but I always repeat it for the, for the new folks that are listening. Um, in 2017, I stepped on the scales at 304 pounds, and that was a real tipping point for me, uh, and I realized that I was likely to be my wife's first husband because I was 55 years old, and you know the odds are that within 10 years I'd have been dead, and that uh, meant that I would... Uh, that I would be gone, she'd probably remarry, even though she says she wouldn't, but she probably would. I'm, I married up. I, I married one of those uh, one of those beautiful ladies, uh, like a lot of you guys did. But I um, I got the, I got the best one though. But my wife Angie would probably remarried my my kids who uh, are were at the time were 15 all the way to 27 would eventually call somebody else dad. Uh, somebody else would be. Um, known as granddad to the grandkids that uh, we have in our future and uh, not none that we know of right in a second but uh, but also just that I wouldn't get to get to have my dream and I didn't even know what my dream was at the time so what's um, what's crazy is you know after losing what I did I committed to losing um, 129 pounds in uh, 260 days and I did that when a guy asked me the question, what's holding me back? And I told him it was my weight. It was totally out of context to the conversation. And that weight was holding me back from so much stuff. And, you know, at first glance, for most people, you're thinking about all those things that are related around obesity and health and all those. And those are really, really, really important. But it was way beyond that. When I said it, it was way beyond that. And I, I just want to talk to you guys. You know, I work with men who struggle with obesity. Angie and I work with ladies and couples, but um, you know, I, I work with a lot of guys that have had a lot of success losing weight. And you know, when they come to me, I ask them a lot of questions. I ask a ton of questions because I want to know where people are in that conversation. And and I and I'm doing these posts so you guys will have a sense of you know what you know what this is all about but not just from that standpoint but you know what it may be costing you you know it's become such a common thing in our country to be obese it's very it's socially acceptable I mean it really is look around and you know without going into a lot of data but um, you know throw a few numbers at you uh, there's 38 percent of our population is obese and is projected to go to 50 percent of our population do you know how many people that is? That's 150 million people if we don't have any growth in this country. And that's just the U.S. That, that doesn't even consider other countries, other first world countries especially, that have obesity issues. And, you know, we put all this emphasis on diet. We put all this emphasis, and I, you know, I, I have, you know, my, my slogan for my company is, it's not a diet, it's a decision. And I mean that, and, and when, when I'm working with individuals, it's interesting, you know, people come to me and they, you know, they have a lot of concerns about, you know, what to eat. They have a lot of concerns about not being able to stick to something, have a lot of concerns about those, those kind of issues. And then it, it's so interesting that, that when they move beyond those pounds and move beyond that day, it, it's, it's, um, it's pretty amazing some of the things. And I was going to share some things with you in a minute, but, but I want you guys to, to think about you know, just, just take one area that your obesity is costing you. And you may not think you're obese. You know, you have a few pounds to lose. And if, if you just got a couple pounds to lose, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the individuals that, that are overweight, uh, you know, seriously overweight. Uh, obesity is defined as uh, a 30 BMI or higher. And a lot of people say, well, you know, those BMI tables aren't accurate. Well, they're, they get you in the ballpark, depending on your situation. I mean, they're, you know, if you're not, if you're not super muscular and you can go down all these lists. And I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I say this every night. And I don't do it as a CYA statement. I do it because I want you guys to understand. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a physical fitness expert. I'm a guy that literally has um, gone through the wilderness of obesity and come out the other side a different person. And so in, from a different person in all aspects of my life. And I want 
I want you to think about, you know, those, those situations if you're obese, and you don't like to talk about this, but if you're obese typically, because I, I didn't. And even the word obese is so ugly, but, but I, you know, sometimes pulling that mirror in and looking at yourself and saying what reality is, is how many times have you avoided a picture because, you, because of your weight? How many times have you, you know, not spoken up because of your weight? How many times have you been ashamed? I'm talking about real shame. I'm, I remember getting on an airplane one time and when they come, when you can't get that seatbelt buckled, oh my God. I mean, how that feels, packed the airplane with 200, 300 passengers and they're having to bring you the extra seat buckle and to, to cover up because you're fat. How about walking down that aisle? You ever, you, you ever walk down that aisle, an airplane, and, and you, you've got a middle seat, and, and, and people are saying, oh, please, and you know they're saying, please don't let that guy sit by me. Please don't let him sit by me, because they know they're gonna be squished. They're gonna be squished in, and, and it's just, it's so embarrassing. It's embarrassing to go shop for clothing. You know, I had a, I had a men's clothing store with two partners um, for 17 years. I was in that business for 25 years. And we always wondered why fat guys didn't like to shop. And, and I was, you know, I, I always had, I'd carried extra weight, but I wasn't morbidly obese, which is a 40 BMI or higher until I got, you know, uh, until, you know, I'd left that business. And, but at the end of the day, you know, the guys who, who are morbidly obese or obese, they, they don't want to shop because it's embarrassing. I mean, it's just plain embarrassing to walk in the store and, and to go to the size 44s and not be able to button them and, and have to go to the big and tall section. And, you know, you feel like, and I don't say this to embarrass or shame people, but, you know, to make jokes about, I used to make a joke, I needed Omar the tent maker to make my clothes. And, you know, that how it felt good to say it. It took pressure off. The levity p took pressure off, but it was, but it was hurtful. I remember Angie, my wife, you know, telling me that she used to hate to get on elevators with me. And I didn't even know this. This is how, how it was just something that I didn't even realize I was doing. But I, but I compensated for my obesity by saying things like, you know, that. I hope the elevator doesn't fall. I don't even know what I said because I didn't even remember. She said, it's so good to get on an elevator with you now because you're just a normal person. You don't make crack jokes about how fat you are. And, and I didn't even realize I did it. And, you know, all the hell of being fat. I mean, the hell of being fat. And, and we, we live in a country, $72 billion industry is what the, the weight loss industry is. $72 billion in the U.S., and we still haven't figured it out, it's getting worse. So maybe it's not the diet. Of course you have to eat differently. Of course you have to move your body. That's that, but maybe that's not the key. And, and that's what I, when I'm working with individuals, when they realize that, it, it, it really, it turns them. And, and, I, and sometimes it takes longer than, with some than others, but it's so neat to see it happen. And when they get their confidence back, and they get the, the ability to go out. Um, they always had the ability, but when they, they're, the shame has gone away. You know, when I, I was, and I, you know, when, when a man has an intimacy issue, because I don't want to get into a lot of personal things like this, but men have intimacy is, issues because of, because of their weight. They, you know, if they're on a lot of medications, they're on, you know, different things. I mean, how, how awful is that? I mean, how awful is that? They, they have issues with, you know, all these different, uh, you know, situational issues with family and relationships, and when people are talking to them about, you know, about their, you know, about their weight, and uh, they're always, you know, my mother for years. I, I talked to Mama a little while ago. She's over ninety now, and she's, uh, you know, she lost weight when she was young, younger. She was like in her thirties, and she would tell me, "You've got to lose weight. You've got to lose weight. You've got to lose weight." It was so funny when I lost weight. She said, you need to gain weight. You need to gain weight. So you're not ever going to please your family. But but it's nice to not have the the individuals that are always harping on you. When you're eating Thanksgiving dinner and they're watching you say, I wonder how many platefuls of food that guy's going to get. I hope there's enough left. And and I mean, I can go on and on and on. And I, I don't say any of this to shame anybody. I'm really not. I say it to wake you up because that's not even the real issue. That's the stuff we think about when we're fat. And we, and we think about these you know, maybe my joints won't hurt. Maybe I'll feel better. Maybe I can get off some of the medications. All those are super important, probably more important than any of that. But the thing that really gets, got my attention is what some of the men have told me that I work with and, and you know, in my program called Rethink Dieting. 
and, and when they're telling me things, you know, that, that have happened, you know, one of, one of my guys said, said the losing weight, and, and these are men that are still on the journey. Some of them lost, you know, 50 pounds, 60 pounds, 75, some 20 pounds, some over 100 pounds, you know, it, but, they're, but the difference of being out of prison versus being in prison completely. I mean, what does that have to do with weight? How about everything? And, and this is an individual that's not incarcerated. He's a law-abiding citizen. So when he's talking about prison, he's talking about the prison of obesity. And change in their life, when, when they began to change their life, and this is, this is something, when that started to happen for this individual's, that he, this individual, that they changed their life, the change, because of the change in him, he was causing change in others. What does that have to do with, you know, measuring your food or whatever that? And and he, he says another one, the prison door opened for me, it became open for others. And, and I, I asked for some of these, not not to do this right here, so this is, these are individuals that have, that have written stuff out that um, that was interesting and interesting to me, because this doesn't have anything to do with how much, how much broccoli you eat. I mean, it does. It has to do with what kind of life you have, and you know, what's that worth? What is that worth? What's having your dream worth? I mean, these are we're talking about dreams, hopes, and desires. The the individuals that are over two hundred and fifty pounds, over three hundred and fifty pounds, over four hundred and fifty pounds, over five hundred pounds, they still have dreams too. And deep in, and I've been one of those people, so I understand when they write this. You know, some of the other things started two businesses. What's that got to do with being fat? Let's say this individual's lost almost uh, 90 pounds, I think it is, um, 85, I believe it is. But um, I know I can see confidence, you know, to not be embarrassed, for other family members to start paying attention to their, their weight. Um, you know, to have the confidence when you start, when you, when you lose weight, that you can accomplish that. And it's, it's so interesting, momentum, I don't know if you guys are sports fans, we're not getting to watch any sports now with COVID-19 and all the, the changes that we're going through, but but if you but if you've seen those games where you know that the that the team is losing momentum, and you see the tide shift, and then the other team, whether it's football or basketball or whatever, whatever you're watching, and the other team is starting to gain momentum, and they win the game because of momentum. And what I say to you is is when you start to lose weight, when you start to lose weight, if you're obese and or morbidly obese and you start to lose weight and it gives you momentum and you see that you can win in that area, it gives you momentum in other areas and you start winning and you start winning again. And that's what I'm seeing happen over and over again. And it's crazy. I get, I get chills when I think about this, uh, it, this really. I mean, cause it, cause it happened to me and, it ha and it's happening to other people. And so I would say to you guys, be inspired. Don't be discouraged. Don't be inspired. If you're obese, there is a way out. I'm positive. I've, I've, I've walked through the woods. I know the I know the way out. There's it's it it is 100 possible to um, to get control of your weight. Is it simple? Yes. Is it always easy? No. Sometimes it is. Some it's easier for others. But but at the end of the day, it is something that that's real that can happen. And so I say, don't give up. And I guess that's my message to everybody tonight that, that's watching. And, and you know, share this if you would. I mean, share this with somebody that's hopeless, man, woman, child, whatever, that's hopeless about their weight. I want it to serve you guys. I, I, I do these, you know, it, this obviously helps my business, helps people know who I am, sure. But at the end of the day, I really want people to understand there is hope. I do this because I'm passionate about it. I'm, I, I want people to win at this. And, you know, some people want to work with me, and that's fine. I, I, you know, I had a guy on the phone the other the other day that he, you know, he wasn't in a position to, to work with me, and um, he wasn't. Uh, and so, but I wanted to know, and I asked him. He said, "This is," he said something like, "This was the best 45 minutes I've spent in years." He got on a call with me, and we just I helped him see some things he didn't see. Not because I'm a genius, it's because I've been there. And and I say that over and over and over again because it, it is important, and I think it's real. It is difficult for people. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think it is difficult for somebody who's, you know, lost five pounds in their life. They've never had an obesity issue. They might be an expert in nutrition, or they might be an expert in physical fitness, or they might have an MD or, or whatever. But they they have this knowledge, but they don't have it experientially. They don't have the experience of walking out of obesity. 
And I think that's really, really important. It, it, it meant, you know, when I went, when I walked through it, it was just, it was that time. And it was like, it was an appointed time that it was gonna get done. And I learned so much along that journey. I learned, you know, I journaled every day. I wrote, wrote things out, I, I shared it with others. I was real open about it. If you guys can't tell, I'm not, not too bashful. I'm not great at these videos yet, I'm learning. But, um, but I want to, but I'm getting better. I promise you I'll be better. But it, when I think about the, what, what people are going through and they don't really have a roadmap, they don't know how to get out. And so it becomes one of these things. I know a coach of mine told me one time, to, one time about a business thing I was working on. He said, this is years ago. And, and I said, what would you do? He said, one, two, three, many. He's like, what does that mean? He said, he said, Alan, you can focus on one thing, maybe two, maybe three, but after three, it's just many. It's the forest and trees. So knowing what to focus on and when to focus on it is so important. Having somebody to walk you through through the woods and to the other side is, and, and so if this has resonated with you, if you think it'll help somebody, like I said, be inspired, be encouraged. It, you can get to the other side, but be realistic too that, that you can't keep doing what you're doing. You've got to change. There, there has to be a point in time that you're ready to change, that you're absolutely sick and tired of being morbidly obese or obese, and you're, you'll do anything to get out, and that's where I was. Those are the people that I work with. Those are the people that I work that, that have made the decision because it is not a diet, it's a decision. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, dietitian, physical fitness expert. I have uh, I have a degree in finance, how about that? I was pretty good in college. and but I, but I do know the way through the woods of obesity, and that I'm positive of. So if it's resonated with you, share it with a friend. Um, make some comments in there. I can't see I, on the video. I'm not able to see the chat. I'll, I'll respond to those later. Reach out to me if, um, if this is something that you, if you want to have an honest conversation. I, um, I have some time on my calendar I've set aside uh, for these calls, and you can go to um, two, two different links. They go to the same place. One is fat the number two freedom.com fat to freedom.com or transform my future.com forward slash apply that will get you uh, ability to pick a spot on my calendar it's a completely free call totally free call um, you can get on the calendar we can have a 45 minute conversation see if I can help you see if our program's right for you but at the end of the day it's really about helping you understand what's going on helping you maybe see some things that you didn't see before and um, and those calls are, are, are fun we have a little fun on them but at the end of the day it's about uh, really saving the life that you got here on earth saving that life realize you you don't get to be here forever and don't cut it short you know take it seriously do what you have to do and and remember you know make a decision don't go on another diet make a decision so till tomorrow night i'm alan thomas and have a great evening bye-bye